So we have a couple main manufacturers of props. And the first one I'll talk about is Macaulay. Okay. And Macaulay's can be broken down into two general series. So as you get out there and you service propellers, if you service propellers, depends on how much you decide to get into these or not, you'll see a couple different designs. But Macaulay is a big name, Hartzell is a big name. Uh, we also had props from uh, Dowdy. You'll see Dowdy props out there, so a few different companies. And they all have little differences in how they operate uh, in designs, but a few different kind of design considerations when you're out there working with these. So Macaulay Constant Speed Propellers, they come in two series. They have their older propellers, which are called threaded series. So in this case, what, what, what the difference is here is how is the blade attached to the hub? So instead of, you know, in a, in a fixed pitch propeller, the hub and the blades, right, they're all one piece typically, or they're wood built up, uh, or they're kind of, if it's a ground adjustable, they're bolted in place. These, you know, the blade now has to be able to move in that, um, in that hub. And so as it moves, there's different ways of attaching them or retaining them. Newer ones, what you see today, modern Macaulay props use a threadless series, and they use something called a split ring, uh, where it's purely the force of the um, centrifugal force and uh, the forces of it, 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 it locks together using the geometry of it rather than relying on a thread, like a pipe thread. So here on the left is a threaded style. And so what happens here is we've got this ferrule is part of the hub. This is, this is attached to the side of the hub, kind of like you got a hub over here. And we put our, there's a bearing race that goes in there and ball bearings. So these have ball bearings on them to, you know, one, it's got to take that force. Those propeller blades, they want to they wanna shoot out the ends of the hub, right? There's a lot of centrifugal force on them. So they're trying to, the propeller blades are trying to go this way if they're spinning. They've also got to be able to rotate in there. And so the ball bearings allow that load transfer while having that centrifugal force without binding up. So there's a race that goes down there that's part of this. There's also a bearing race on the propeller. So on the, the bearing on the blade is going to catch this kind of lift. The bearing race here is going to push against, it's where the force of this is going to push against the ferrule. And then we have a, there's O-rings in there to seal it, but really what happens is this ball bearing setup which surrounds the base of the blade, gets put down in here. And then there's a big retention nut that screws into the top of this ferrule. Okay. That is, the inside of it is a little bit smaller than once, that, once those bearings are in there, the bearings sit in here. And when it holds these two races together, that squeezes the bearings, the ball bearings, into this notch on the propeller and holds it together. Because we wouldn't be able to slide these on if they were bigger than the base of this prop blade, right? We've got to be able to slide this bearing race and this retention nut over from this end. They definitely can't go over up here because it gets a lot wider in the actual blade. So what happens is as this is screwed together, this retention nut screws down in here, it squishes these two bearing races together and they kind of form, they kind of form the outside. You know, they, they come together they're this, they're kind of this shape, right? The, the blade would be over to my right, your left. So as they come together like this, the ball is right here and they push the ball into a notch on the blade that's shaped like this at the base of the blade. That's this ring that's shown here, okay? So once those are all together, the ball is in here locking those three bearing, there's a bearing race that's essentially part of the blade and then those two split races that form the outer two thirds. And once those are all locked together, the ball bearings are going to prevent the blade from being able to pull out away from the race. And that nut screws down into the ferrule. What is the, why did they go away from this? What's the weak point here? I'm just gonna draw real quick. So think about what the weak point is. So if this is the, if we look at the blade, Oh boy, there we go. There's the base of the blade. Okay, see so it's got that ring in it. And here is 
the upper bearing race, it sits something like this. Its profile looks like this. It's a little big. This is the lower bearing race here. Those are squished by the nut, and then inside of there, the ball bearings sit here and they kind of lock it together. Okay, once it's all assembled. So what's the weak point here? Why are these, why did we go away from these? What do you think? What do you think would fail if you look at this? Where would the failure occur? What's really weak? What are very thin and very weak, potentially? The threads, okay? These had a tendency, remember, there's a lot of centrifugal force trying to push this thing out. These threads would go bad or could tear out of there, okay? There's not a lot of structure. You're just held by it. Now, there's a lot of them. They're fine thread. They're held together. So what they've gone to is this design over here. And this is a threadless propeller. So again, we have our, our propeller, our blade, and the, the end of the blade here. We've got some bearing races. And then we have something called a split retainer at the bottom. And so what happens is this blade drops down into the hub. We put the ball bearings around it, and then the split retainer, and then when it gets pushed back up, that split retainer is bigger than this opening right here. It's very similar. Does everyone remember going back to basic engines when you had those split keys to hold the valve, uh, the seat on, or the valve cap on, right? It creates, they're very small, right? This is the same kind of thing. So these split retainers are like those two little keys, and they jam, they wedge into, in this case, the bottom of this opening. The bottom of this opening is tapered. It's a tapered hole. And so you drop the blade down inside. You reach in through here. You put the ball bearings on, and then this keeper, and then the blade gets pushed up against that thing. And then there's springs and other items we'll see in a second that kind of hold they push out on the blades right to keep them from falling in when nothing's happening what holds those blades in position when the plane's actually when the propeller's spinning when it's running the centrifugal force is just going to jam that even tighter okay so here is a threaded one so this is what i was talking about earlier you've got your your two races here one sits against a plate inside of the um Inside of here, and this 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 mechanism down here is what rotates the blades with a lot angle. Holes here are locked into the the base of the blade, and then this cap, this threaded piece, is here squishing this all together. Okay, so that's our threaded um, version. Here is the non-threaded, and this is where I was talking about. The split part is right here. It also acts as a bearing race. And you can see there's kind of a taper built into the propeller hub right here. So we slide this whole blade. None of this is in. This gets installed after the blades are in place. None of the, the piston, the forks, the ring, this all gets put in afterwards. So we slide the blade in. We put the ball bearings, that's why there's little red things there. That's a ball bearing keeper. It's like little plastic kind of frames that keep the bearings. They, they kind of hold the bearings. We'd pop these apart and they'd go everywhere sometimes. Uh, I did work on some propellers of this style, uh, but they were dowdy, but they use a similar style. Our lower bearing race, so you slide this upper bearing race on, you slide the lower, and then you've got the split keys here that this all pushes against on the blade, okay? And so you can see there's no threads there to fail and ultimately cause it to come out. Hmm. 12.35, right? Okay. Next one we have is a Macaulay. So in this case, um, Macaulay use, tends to use oil pressure to increase blade angle. Okay. They use centrifugal force. These are the ones that have weights on them in order to decrease blade angle. Okay. And so here we've got the, our piston. 
that pushes these forks to rotate it. There's our spring pushing it to the left. Okay. So the spring and the centrifugal weights, they work together in this case. So that's how they go together and how they're actually operated. So when we need to increase blade angle, oil is ported. Here's the crankshaft that, that um, prop governor is going to pour oil up here. It's going to push on the piston. It's going to push it to the right. And as the piston goes to the right, the you have these blade actuating links on each side. Okay. And at the base of the blade, you can see this small circle here. There is a, at the base of the blade, there's a little, like a, a protrusion, a circular a cylinder that sticks off the base of the blade. And so as this moves, as it rotates one way or the other way, it drags the blade with that circle. So essentially, these, these blade actuating links, they rotate. As that comes in, it causes this link to rotate. So this top link is going to rotate clockwise. That's going to cause this, essentially, to this whole thing, to, this whole disc to rotate. And the pin of the blade that's engaged with this circle here is going to change the pitch. It's going to move the, the blade. I can't remember if you can see it in these here. Um, not really, not a great one. There's this, and then the blade itself is pinned into this block right here. So as this moves down, as the piston moves down, it pushes this block, and the pin that's in the blade is going to get dragged one way. The other. And you can see the same thing's happening in the back, the rear block. So here we have a picture of one removed. Different features you can see. Here's our dome, pressure in the front. You can see there is no, there's no port on the front of the dome. Okay, so it doesn't use air pressure. That tells you there's oil at the very front of the dome. You have your centrifugal weights right here that are attached to the blades. Those are going to assist the spring. They want to be, they want to be in line with the plane of rotation. So they're going to help to drag those blades back. Sorry, count rates added. In this case, twisting to increase blade angle. I don't know why I was thinking the other way. I think I got ahead of myself. <laughs> so, looking at the governor more in depth, this kind of just shows how they're assembled, uh, where what the different parts are called. So, here is your integral oil pump. You can see it's right off the drive shaft. Okay, base plate oil comes in, integral oil pump. The relief valve is used, one, is if we don't need the pressure, we have to allow the oil to travel back uh, to the engine, right? We don't want to stop the flow of oil. Uh, so they, they use the relief valve to do that. It also takes into account when, when we release oil pressure from the propeller, we have to have somewhere for it to go. Okay, so if we're not actuating, it's going to allow it to fly back, flow, flow back, excuse me. Here's the flyweight assembly and the pivot points with the toes that are going to push up against the ring and the head right here. And then we've got our control arm, which is going to adjust the amount of tension on the, the speed spring in order to then, you know, this pilot valve is attached to the head, which is pushed up and down by the two flyweights.
adjustments as you put these on and you have to make adjustments is that you you need to have the ability to kind of set your low your low rpm and your high rpm by setting your minimum pitch and your maximum your max minimum blade angle and maximum blade angle part of that is set in the uh, in here you can see that there are spacers that allow for a low pitch shot that will physically stop the blades when it gets to a certain point okay, so in this case the low pitch spacer as this comes forward as this piston comes forward when it hits this spacer right now this this is fully forward this there's always some space here this whole thing doesn't move to the dome or anything so right now it's in the low pitch position you can see there are physical stops in the propeller itself and as it moves back when it gets when oil pressure is fully engaged when you go to high pitch it will stop the piston when it gets back to this point here but during the rigging of the engine you want to be able to do or rigging of the engine and propeller you want to be able to make fine adjustments to it and that's what's done here so this is kind of like when you do flight controls are you all familiar with primary and secondary stops right so same kind of a thing here you are going to go out run the aircraft and then adjust the screws which essentially adjust the range that you can move the governor arm and that governor arm is the one on top that's going to adjust the amount of pressure on the speed spring and ultimately the amount of pressure that's on your flyweight and so in this case you'll have you know your your propeller lever hooks up to the end of this arm here on the bottom left and these two screws high rpm stop screw which is low pitch and low rpm high pitch stop screw you're going to then make those fine adjustments in order to dial in the prop in the engine as part of your know, maintenance and setup questions on that so that's McCulley next week uh, we'll start with we'll look at Hartzell propellers